So the idea of uh, of original goodness in uh, in Celtic Christianity is one that uh, scholars will debate for sure. I have a couple of friends who would say that it's not really as much a part of the tradition as some people want to think it is. Um, but I disagree. I think it's really, really there, especially um, it's in Eri Eugena, uh, who was in himself an Irish um, scholar. Uh, it's also in Columbanus and it's also in uh, Pelagius and it's also in uh, the penitential tradition. Um, and the idea is that it's basically an alternative view of original sin, um, which arguably is more of an original view of original sin, um, which just sort of goes back to the earlier patristic sources. It's very much in line with uh, someone like Basil of Caesarea. Um, and the idea is that rather than having a corrupted nature um, inherited through physical reproduction, like Augustine taught, um, that we are born the way that God wants us to be. We are born as the image of God in God's goodness. Um, and if I can, I'll actually maybe draw from Basil a little bit, because I think Basil speaks so beautifully to it, even though he's not himself a Celtic Christian. Um, he was certainly influential and read by the Celts. And he looks back to the Genesis story and uh, where it says that humanity was created in the image and likeness of God. And Basil says that those two things are separate, the image and the likeness. And he wants to make a distinction between them. Um, and so for Basil, the, the image of God is our rationality, our, our potential for higher thought, our potential for growth and, and almost end the angelic part of our nature in a way. Um, and it's a gift which we have. It's just, it's implanted in us. We don't choose it. It's simply what we are. And it's nothing changes it or corrupts it or takes it away from us. Um, but the likeness of God is something which we have to grow into. Um, and he, he presents it very much in terms of free will and of personal growth. And he says that we are given a gift in our image, um, but that God does not want us simply to be the receivers of gifts, but also the bestowers of gifts. And so the gift which we give back to God is the growing into the likeness. Uh, and so we are born in the image and we grow into the likeness. One is a gift which is given freely to us, and the other is a gift which we give back to God. Um, and so that, that image which we have, uh, to bring it back to, to the Celtic idea, that image which we are created in is that idea of original goodness, that idea that, that the essence of our being is something unchangeable, um, which is good in its essence because it flows forth from the ultimate source of goodness, from God who is the bestower of all good things. Um, but that our likeness to that image can become corrupted. And that is where we see sin come into the human condition. When we bear the image of God, but we do not bear the likeness of God. In practical terms, how that works in, uh, you know, in, in the spiritual life of, uh, of an individual person, and especially within the Celtic context, they, they had what they called penitentials, which were books of spiritual practices, essentially what they called penance, um, which were designed to help return us to the original goodness to help to correct the likeness which had gone awry. Ar and their teachings on that come very much from the desert tradition, uh, specifically from John Cassian, who got it from Evagrius. Um, and both Evagrius and Cassian wrote books with sort of categories of different uh, vices, demons, sins, whatever you want to call them. The seven deadly sins kind of comes out of that tradition as well. Uh, they had eight that they named. Um, and those were understood as being something which covers up the image of goodness which we have. Um, and uh, Colin Bandis uses the, the imagery of a painting when he talks about it. And he says that the human soul is a, is a work of art and we can paint over top of it. And we want it to reflect the image of Christ, but we can paint other images over top. And he says, we can paint the image of a tyrant. We can paint the image of evil and sin on top of that image. Um, and so he recommends that we then learn to undo all of these things which are corrupting and tainting the original goodness which we carry within us. They're not, well, not truly corrupting, um, but uh, blurring and obscuring perhaps is a better, better term. Uh, and so they use the principle of contraries, uh, which is an ancient idea that comes from Galen and uh, Hippocrates in the Greek world uh, of medicine, of physical medicine, uh, where they believe that contraries are healed by contraries. 
Um, if you have too much wetness in your body, what you need is dryness. If you have too much cold, what you need is heat. Um, and that was the basic principle of all Western um, medicine at the time. And uh, the, the Desert Fathers took that idea and they applied it to the soul. And, and the Celts very much picked up that idea. They loved this idea of being a physician of the soul. And so the Anamkaras, the, the confessors, the spiritual directors, uh, Anamkara is a word which just means soul friend. Um, they had a, this practice built around this idea of contraries, that they're gonna heal the soul by the application of contraries. And so if a person is struggling with pride, what you do is you apply humility. If a person is struggling with anger, what you do is you apply forgiveness. And they had spiritual practices laid out in categories that they could sort of apply in this way. 